Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. You saw what happened during the housing crisis, and now we need to look at the indicators that could show a new crisis. I'm going to give you that up front. Then I'm going to talk about why the central banks are doing what they're doing, and you could see each and every step of the way as it all happens real time. Let's begin. More than 8 million Americans are late on rent as prices increase. I've shown you this, but I didn't need to because I know you you are feeling it as well. Census Bureau survey shows 15% of renters aren't caught up. 15% of renters. You remember what happened during 2020. Okay, people don't have to pay their rent. People don't have to pay their mortgage. People don't have to pay their student debt. People don't have to pay anything back. But of course, eventually it needs to be paid back. You can't simply write off everything. We would have a very big problem with the currency if that would be the case. More will feel the squeeze as leases come due in the summer. So watch what happens. I will cover each and every step of the way. Give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe because I'm going to bring you all that data. Looking at it on a closer level, you can see what individually has happened. U.S. rents surged by another record, led by a 41% jump in Miami. My goodness, of course somebody can't afford this. Of course, a 41% jump is going to have an impact on a lot of people. Now, that's one city, and that's at the top of the list. But you can see how many different places this has happened to. Look, Miami, Orlando, Phoenix, San Diego, Las Vegas, massive price increases. And this is something that is, number one, unsustainable. And number two, it's a very big detriment to the individuals who are already dealing with inflation in just about every other part of their lives. So you see this having an impact on the economy. Remember that. Keep that in mind. Let's go. Miami locals are steamed over relocating New Yorkers driving up apartment rents. So people are fleeing. They're saying, I'm going elsewhere. And there's different reasons for that. Depends on the company or depends on the, the individual or family. But you see that general trend. People moving out of New York, they're moving out of Chicago, they're moving to places such as Florida. Then you also have on the other end of the spectrum, you look over to the West Coast, you see California, people are moving to Nevada, people are moving to Texas. You see this happening. It is a very big trend, but that creates holes in areas like New York, and it creates problems for people in Florida who aren't used to this. And the same thing is happening in the small towns. If you had heard about this, um, where people were saying, hey, work from home and so on. So they were moving out and they were going back to, um, you know, small areas. Maybe it was their hometown many years ago or, you know, they just liked it, whatever. And so they were moving out of these big cities, moving into the small towns. Suddenly people are just priced out because they don't make the money in that town. OK, this is coming from outside in. OK, anyway, looking at the 30 year fixed mortgage rate. You see right now, haven't seen it increase at a pace like this since that time frame of 1980. And at this time, I mean, this data comes from Freddie Mac. So you go and get your mortgage today. It's, you know, could be something completely different than this. But we are, it shows 5.81%. Uh, but we're looking at around, I mean, depending, I saw as high as at the peak, 6.28%. Again, Depends on where you're going to get it. And this assumes that your credit is good. Everything's all in order. There's no issues. If you've got a certain percentage down, like everything has to be in order for that to be the case. So you look at it over the last while and understand that, hey, mortgage rates are not where they were before. And there is a breaking point. So we will see. Coast to coast, housing correction is coming, says Moody's chief economist. U.S. home prices will likely fall in the most overvalued markets, but it will fall short of a crash, saying basically the steam has to come out of this, but it's not going to be a collapse. It's not going to be what we saw back in 20, uh, 2008 and so on. Okay, I, I don't know, certainly, but what happened from 2020 up until let's say you know the following year or even two years this was you know it's a bubble that's a true bubble bubble top and that is never a good sign because 
things go up, things go down uh, just as fast or sometimes even faster. So watch very carefully for the bubble indications when they prices go up 50% a year, 40, like this is, this is not good. Goldman Sachs says the US housing market will soon slow sharply as rising mortgage costs put homes out of reach for many Americans. And that's what we need to focus on. You as an individual, if you want to know when is the right time to buy, should I buy my investment property now or should I wait? You need to look at all of these things. Price to rent ratio, price to income ratio. You need to look at what's happening with mortgage rates and interest rates. You need to see what the Federal Reserve or the central bank in your country is doing. You need to look at, I mean, there's there's so many permits in your area, vacancies in your area. These are all factors, okay? Those are a whole bunch of uh, really good things to, to know. So I hope you're uh, paying attention, okay? Higher interest rates have raised payments on the median priced homes by over $600 a month. I have shown you the statistics before, and it is very clear that, um, you know, somewhere, depending on the survey, $200 to $400, an increase in payments for people basically puts them over the edge. $200 to $400. And this right here, already, as of today, has increased people's payments by $600. I think there's a little bit of an issue with that. All right. So now we need to talk about, and if I get my little change of scenery here, I can tell you that what we're looking at is a cause for concern. There's many reasons for this, but let's, let's talk about the first one. Average credit card interest rates have topped 20%. Here's how to pay down that debt fast. So they get into different things that you can do. And if you want to know about that, the article is below. Now, when I see what's happening with credit card debt, and I and I watch, unfortunately, people they, they carry a balance for one reason or another. And you know, I understand times can be hard for people, but I hope that people right now, if they can, if they have the means to do so, you work second job, whatever it takes to get out of at least your credit card debt, this is the big one, okay? Because we watch as credit card debt has risen, interest rates along with it, that means the balances are just gonna be more and more painful for people. Um, and this has happened at a time when all of those things that I talked about before, you know, the moratoriums ended. And suddenly people started using their credit cards again. Cost of insulin is driving Americans into debt. Uh, very, you know, you don't want to hear that. That people's healthcare costs are rising. Uh, that That's a big one, okay? And all of this is because of the cycle that the Federal Reserve has put everybody through. You got to understand that. The central bank is the one creating this. And guess what? All central banks around the world, for the most part, are going in the same direction. Fed Dove Daily joins officials to open to 75 basis points. 75 in July is where I'm starting. So they're basically all going for 75 basis points. What does that mean? It means the top end of the range for the Fed funds rate is 2.5% in a matter of weeks. 2.5% of the Fed funds rate. Let's see what happens. Stay tuned, all right? One of the largest apartment owners in the U.S., Starwood, was an aggressive buyer of rental houses during the first two years uh, back 2020. As renters saw bigger spaces to, uh, sought bigger spaces to ride out the remote working area uh, era, but guess what? They're selling. They're selling some of those homes. So I'm interested. I'm interested to see what's happening. Are they simply just profit-taking? Or do they see a big downturn and now want to walk? I think that's, I think it's interesting. And this is not, you know, some random person. I'm talking about a big buyer of homes. And then a little bit of, um, I guess, humor. This is uh, Paul Krugman. Okay. This is a quote. Okay. <laughs> and all my... Long-term subscribers will know uh, my humor is a little bit different than some others, but here's a quote. My concern is actually that the ECB is way ahead of the curve and that they're going to do what historically the ECB has tended to do, which is to over-contract with monetary policy. 
my goodness. Paul Krugman, I didn't know you would make me laugh here today, but you did. The ECB, which has held interest rates in the negative, which has kept interest rates, what was it, 2012 or was it 2012 or, or even before that, brought them into the negative. I mean, this is beyond comprehension. But that's ridiculous. Anyway, inflation's impact, 88% cut spending, while many worry about providing food and paying the mortgage. Okay, so we're seeing this in these different surveys. I just want to highlight this yet again. A great purge is pushing small truckers out of business at an unprecedented rate. Again, what I'm showing you here is simply the fact that as input costs go up, as gasoline goes up, as inflation runs hot in every category, it's directly affecting businesses that may be deemed extremely important. One really good indicator, actually, uh, that I want you to know about, because I give out everything. If, you've, if you're new to the channel, understand this. I give everything. Yes, they're all in the sources, in the description. That's different. I actually try to give you all the sources. Okay, that's a big difference. Anyway, this is subdial.co, S-U-B-D-I-A-L.co. It tracks all the different luxury watches. Not all of them, but but you know, some of the popular ones. But like Philippe, Rolex, you could see what's happening with Rolex. Can you believe this? Down 7.9% in the last 30 days. Has the bubble popped? Is it going to start slowing down after these crazy, absolutely crazy things that have happened? Look, this one example, Rolex Daytona, 19.4% over the last 12 months, 20%. You bought a Rolex a year ago, it has increased in value 20%. I have talked about it over and over again. I believe I mentioned it in my first book that jewelry is something that people can enjoy, like especially when you think about like precious metals. You can enjoy the jewelry. It gives you function instead of just putting it in a safe deposit box, instead of just putting it in your safe or what have you. You can actually enjoy it, and over a long period of time, it appreciates. Now, maybe somebody's never going to sell that Rolex, but at least it's something that's better than some, you know, traditional liabilities, some, some nonsense kind of thing, okay? And uh, I'm going to end there. I just wanted to really highlight that, that we must think out of the box. We must do this in all ways. Everything that we can do right now, we must, because inflation is running too hot. The average person is really struggling to pay. And so what can we do? Well, I've got a playlist called How to and Solutions. There's some stuff in there. I wrote two books. For those, I know today reading is not so cool, but I like to read. Take online courses. I've talked about, uh, I think I posted it on this channel, where to actually get free, free online courses, like good stuff. And that uh, was, you know, the video escapes me right now, but it was a short that I made. But essentially, just look out there and you will find this. You will see that there's a lot of information. We have to update our skills. Update or strengthen or just, you know, do what we can. That's all. Okay? I'm going to end the video. If you support me, just hit that thumbs up button. That's all I ask. Okay? Hit that subscribe. 282,000. We are heading on our way up to 282,000. That's the way this channel works. And that's it. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.